Hello, my name is Matisse Cavodi. I'd like to welcome you guys to my channel. Today, we're talking about the Avengers tie-in to the Inferno crossover, which they're not the best. <laughs> and we actually get, at least for me, the worst Avengers lineup in the history <laughs> of that team. Uh, I'm not going to hate on it too hard because they do establish like it. This is sort of a, a team that's formed for, this, for that situation because the Avengers had disbanded prior to this just prior to this particular story. So we're going to cover Avengers 298 to Avengers 300. But, like, it's the 300th issue. So you, you can't celebrate it with such a shit team. At least it doesn't work for me. And there's a lot of weird things in this story. So this is written by Walter Simonson, illustrated by John Buscema. And without further ado, issue 298, we have a day in the life of poor Jarvis. He's out of a job. The Avengers have disbanded. His life, at least at home, he's living with his mom. He seems seems to be pretty insufferable. So he goes out on the town. He needs to fix his television. And um, so while he's going around the city, this is during Inferno. So basically the whole city is like going to hell and converting into this um, place full of demons. And inanimate objects are becoming demons, demons themselves. So it's sort of a funny story where at first Jarvis is pretty oblivious of the whole situation around around him and how everything's going to hell. Till he has to deal with this evil demon car that he has some some balls. He tries to go up against this gigantic robot car. Almost gets killed. He gets saved by Captain America. That that during this time he's just the captain. I don't like I need to get my hands on these Captain America issues where he stops being Captain America, becomes the captain. Uh, he gets the U.S. agent costume for a while. And and I always loved the design of this particular costume. And I always I have a real soft spot for U.S. agent too. Like I love I love to hate U.S. agent. <laughs> so Cap realizes that things are going from bad to worse. He needs to find help. He can't find none of the Avengers. So he goes to the suburbs. Now first, before he, this happens, he starts battling against a bunch of demons he crosses paths with the new mutants were which were a big part of the inferno crossover so he gets a little bit of a uh information of about what's going down a little bit of exposition so cap realizes he needs reinforcements he goes to the suburbs he thinks he has two people that can give him a hand while this is happening we have the eternals Thena, during this time, seems to be the ruler of the Eternals, tells Gilgamesh, go to the city, find out why everything's going to hell. You're a demon and monster slayer. Go do your job. While this is happening, we have Reed and Sue Richards. They're sleeping placidly. And we get Orphan Maker. He's a pretty interesting... Nanny and Orphan Maker are pretty interesting characters. And what he does is he, he kidnaps kids. <laughs> So Nanny can experiment on them. And um, and we see here that he kidnaps poor um, Franklin Richards. I was about to say Nathan. That's his grandfather. And he tries to kill Mr. Fantastic. But Sue Richards has sleeps with a force field around the bed instinctively so he doesn't get shot in the head. Cap arrives to the suburbs. He wants to recruit Reed and Sue into this... Uh, Avengers team that's going to try to resolve this whole situation with Inferno. And sort of funny, he hops in through the window. <laughs> it's like, hi, I'm Captain America. <laughs> I need you guys to fight evil. And they immediately realize that poor Franklin Richards has been kidnapped. So we have Gilgamesh giving Thena a Nazi salute. <laughs> and that costume is terrible. I really don't like the design. Um... I know he's a bull, but I call him Cowman, so. Orphan Maker takes Franklin Richards to Nanny. Nanny's like flips out with Orph Orphan Maker's like, you kidnapped, <laughs> you kidnapped Franklin, Franklin Richards, you know the problems you brought us. So, obviously, Captain America, Reed Richards, start attacking. They find Nanny and Orphan Maker. They attack Orphan Maker. Nanny converts Franklin Richards into this gigantic robot, just like Orphan Maker. So, a battle ensues. 
then we go into issue 300. So what happens in this particular issue? Kang is back. I thought he died in the previous story arc, but he didn't. He arrives to New York City. He doesn't understand what the hell is going on. Here we have the demon. Oh, I can't never remember his name. Nastier. Nat. Na Natir. Nas Nastir. There we go. <laughs> He's the main one of the main villains to the Inferno crossover. He's in part of a war between him and the Goblin Queen and Sim. So that's the whole thing that's going down with the Inferno in that particular story. And this demon called Clitus, I I'm not lying, he's called like that, tells um uh Nast here about Franklin Richards because they're using mutant children to open a portal of limbo, which is like the X-Men's version of hell, to overrun the whole city. So with the power of uh, Franklin, they're going to be able to completely open the storm and make everything to go to hell. So what happens in this particular story, part of the story is they're able to defeat uh, Nanny and Orphan Maker. But they can't get Franklin Richards out of the armor. Uh, there's a moment with the writing with Captain America starts talking to Gilgamesh. Because he doesn't really know who he is. He's like, hey, can you tell me your name at least? And Gilgamesh takes forever to explain who he is. Like, instead of just saying his name, he's like, he calls himself the forgotten one. But he's like, I'm the one that crossed the mountains. And he starts saying things, all the epic things he did. And it's like, Captain America, you can imagine, it's like, Man, just tell me your name. <laughs> While we get the whole introduction of who the hell the Forgotten One was, we have Nast here. He arrives and kidnaps <laughs> poor Franklin Richards while no one's watching. So, two members of the Fantastic Four, Forgotten One, and Captain America have to find Franklin Richards. And it just feels so weird to have the Fantastic Four as member of the Avengers. It just doesn't really work for me. Like the only member of the Avengers that I like on uh member of the Fantastic Four that I like on the Avengers is the thing. I think he's like the only character that works. So what happens in this story is that the Avengers go to New York City. They're gonna try to find Franklin, obviously. And Kang, for his evil plans in the future, need to the Avengers to exist. So he sends this one of these growing men robots to the city to give him a hand to find uh, poor Franklin. So, as they're in the city, they cross paths with Thor. He's like the last member of this new team that I hope doesn't exist anymore after this. There's a coloring issue here. I don't know if it's in my edition, so they, they look Arab for a minute there. And obviously, at the end of the story, they're able to rescue poor Franklin. They are able to defeat the... Because the growing man robot was supposed to help him, but he gets corrupted with all the evil of the city, so they also have to take the growing man dude down. And after the story ends, they try to establish that there there must be an Avengers team. The Avengers can't disband. They're going to refound the team. Here's their oath. And... The Forgotten One and the two members of Fantastic Four are not going to be on this team ever again. So, I mean, and obviously, like, the whole Inferno thing is pretty marginal. It's like they're affected by the situation, but they don't affect the story. But there's a little bit in it. Like, the later on, we're going to see the Fantastic Four tie-ins, and um, there's no relationship with the Inferno story, even though they put <laughs> Inferno continues. So, see you guys next time. Bye.